Good afternoon and thank you all for joining us in this edition of Business Today. It is a Friday and the first day of the month of July 2016. My name is Joy Doreen Bira and on this edition we are going to be speaking about what exactly has been making headlines in the business world throughout the week. And uh, on set right here we have Maurice Odor who is the investment manager at Saiton Investments. He's going to be talking to us about uh, a number of issues. You know the NSC 20 share index dropped to its lowest since 2012. What exactly does that mean and uh, how could this impact uh, the rest of the stocks at the NSC? Is going to be putting that into perspective for us. But also uh, later on we are going to be speaking to Toskin from the Standard Paper who is going to be telling us more about the road to Rio and uh, what economic impact that has on an economy like Kenya's. So uh, Toskin will be joining us a bit later. But also on the show we're going to be talking about a travel advisory and that brings us to a Twitter poll question this afternoon uh, whether we are we're asking you actually do you think travel advisories help us avert terror turn away investors instead or maybe keep citizens vigilant or if you have any other reasons would also like to hear that so you can talk to us more about that and uh, you can use the Twitter handle at KTN News and uh, respond to that question that we have loaded up for you on our Twitter handle. My Twitter handle is at Joy Doreen Bira. We are coming to you live from the Standard Group Center here in Nairobi. Now let's start by giving you some updates on what's making headlines around the country. And we'll start with that story about the US travel advisory where the United States government has issued a new travel advisory warning US citizens to avoid travel to the border areas of Kenya due to threats by Al-Shabaab terror group. According to the travel advisory issued yesterday, American citizens have been asked to avoid uh, travel to the northeastern counties of Mandera, Wajir, and Garissa, the coastal counties of Tana River and Lamu, as well as the area of Kilifi uh, County, north of Malindi, and the Nairobi neighborhood of Isli. Now, in Mombasa, the U.S. Embassy in Kenya has also advised U.S. citizens to not only, uh, to only visit the old town in Mombasa during daylight hours and avoid using the Likoni ferry due to safety concerns. Now this travel advisory replaces a previous one issued last year in November and the Kenyan Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Nkaiseri however says Kenya is safe. And let's now move on to issues. Yesterday was the deadline for all Kenyans working to file their tax returns. Now, the Kenya Revenue Authority has roped in an additional 2 million taxpayers uh, over the past 12 months and a 100% increment over the one year period. According to the tax collector, that is KRA, uh, June 29th registered the largest number of returns filed in a single day. Uh, that is at least 128,000 with just one day to go before the deadline for filing. Now, in a statement, the KRA commended taxpayers as well for meeting their tax obligation and turning out in large numbers to file their 2015 tax returns. This comes after KRA's large tax collection deficit in the last fiscal year. And uh, we'll now move on now to more news and uh, take a look at what is happening with uh, the governors as well, speaking about uh, governance. And Lake Kipia County has been named as the only county uh, to actually put out some good corporate governance uh, ethics in the latest report released by Ernst & Young. The county, which has since established a county revenue authority, has been able uh, to raise its revenue collection from 200 million Kenya shillings to about 534 million Kenya shillings, with the counties being on the spot of a misuse of funds. Uh, like Kipia County Governor Joshua Irungu has urged for counties to embrace strong ethics if counties are to achieve accelerated economic growth. The, the recognition of the, the, county, the government of Lake Kipia County today in this forum indicates that uh, even the county government can be an example, a model of uh, corporate good corporate governance uh, and uh, um, we are here as a county also to, sh to share some of our best practices for us having uh, got to this position of uh, practicing good co uh, corporate uh, governance and, uh, and some of the indicators which are tangible 
is in terms of the, our revenue correction increase uh, from the time the county government came on board. It was about 240 million. And today we, we are hitting a mark of 530 uh, million Kenya shillings. Uh, that is, uh, that's because of uh, co uh, co good corporate uh, governance. And, uh, and, and we are happy and uh, proud of uh, being associated with the, with the Institute of, of Directors, particularly of late, there has been a lot of capacity building and a lot of training in leadership and governance uh, to our various boards that we as a county established. And, uh, and out of that uh, corporate uh, uh, of governance, good uh, corporate of governance, we as a county, we have appreciated uh, in terms of uh, devolved uh, powers to the various structures. Uh, uh, growth, economic growth is in many ways directly proportional to corporate governance systems. So if you don't have those systems in place, the economy gets stuck. I mean, if it is difficult to invest because there is too much bureaucracy, investors look for other places to go and invest. So from that point of view, well, you need to up the game to buy this new attire to the kid who is growing, a country which is growing very fast and very well, so that you meet the expectations of the investors who are not necessarily charity organizations, but who are people who expect a return faster or slow on their investment. Actually, uh, the biggest economy within the sub-Saharan uh, Africa, uh, and within African context, we, we are at ninth position. And in terms of corporate governance, uh, Kenya is doing very well. I think we're in the top 10. But like I said before, uh, a lot of work still remains to be done, especially for Kenya. We've heard a lot about uh, what people keep on talking about as corruption. I think we need to come down more on this uh, and enforce, uh, have enforcement seen through to ensure that uh, uh, we address the challenge of corruption within Kenya context. Away from good governance ethics, let's take a look at some of the reactions coming in from different industries in regard to Brexit. And in the wake of the news of Britain exiting the European Union, markets have reacted variedly to the news. Now, from the dipping of the pound sterling after the vote to uh, global investors moving investment outside of Britain in panic, locally, Kenya Airways Chief Executive Officer Mbuvin Gunze says it is too early uh, for the airline to speculate on just how much impact positive or negative Brexit could have on the aviation industry. I think we all know that there is going to be a settling down period uh, today as we look at how Europe and the UK are approaching that discussion. And I think that will inform the kind of realignment that will have to happen. From a Kenyan tourism point of view, I don't think the impact is there because all those people are individually coming to Kenya, they don't necessarily uh, depend on whether they have a relationship. So if I talk about visitors into Kenya, I don't see a direct, a, a direct connection. All we have to do is focus on how we attract European visitors from the UK or from greater Europe into Kenya. What we could think about is probably how will the aviation arrangements change within Europe, but I think it's very early because I'm sure we'll find solutions. I see so many negativity that Kenya is going to suffer. But the choice of exiting Europe is not Kenyan, it's British. So it's Britain has to make those, made those decisions. And because we have a long-standing historical relationship between Kenya and Britain, then that relationship can never be changed because of their exit. We will develop other mechanisms and channels. And for us, because we had them before, even European Union. So that for us, the impact is limited. And the six-month grace period on the new broadcast programming code ended at midnight last night with new regulations now coming into force. The new regulations require radio and television broadcasters to transmit programming that is appropriate for family audiences during the watershed period, uh, which runs from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. The code also requires TV broadcasters to meet the 40% local content quota within the first year and 60% by the fourth year. TV broadcasters are also required to provide sign language interpretation for news, emergencies and national events.
All right, now away from that, Integrated Financial and Communication Service Provider Safaricom has announced the appointment of Satish Kamath as its Chief Financial Officer and Executive Board Member. Kamath, whose appointment takes effect on the 1st of August 2016, joined Safaricom from Vodacom Tanzania Limited, where he was the Chief Financial Officer and Executive Director on the Board of Vodacom Tanzania. Now, for the last uh, 12 years at a global and local level for Vodafone Operations in London, uh, Australia, that was uh, the outgoing uh, chief financial officer, that is uh, Tom John Thomason, and uh, he is going to be exiting the company at the end of July, paving way for uh, Satish Kamath as the new chief executive officer. And Jean Divet is Kenya Airways' new chief operations officer appointed by the airline's board of directors. Jean joins the airline from Cobalt Ground Solutions in the United Kingdom, where he is currently the managing director. He has held positions in cargo operations at the Air France KLM Group, including being the regional director operations for Benelux, UK and Ireland, regional director Southeast Asia and Australia, the vice president for Asia uh, for for Air France KLM Cargo and Martinair Cargo. Jean, whose appointment takes effect on the 1st of August 2016, replaces uh, Yves Goubet, who leaves the airline at the end of July 2016. All right, now let's also refocus our attention on corporate governance. And uh, Ernst & Young released a report on uh, the latest trends when it comes to corporate governance, the challenges that are being ex experienced as well in this uh, specific uh, sector when it comes to corporate governance ethics. Now, KTN's Abby Aguina did speak to Ernst & Young and... Uh, you know, he'll be bringing us that story in just a short while. But let's now take you to Nyeri, where dairy farmers are being urged to invest in improving their livestock by partnering with the county government uh, by partaking of available artificial insemination services. Now, this is expected to improve the livelihoods and the quality of livestock in Nyeri and also improve production. KTN's current dairy reports. Dairy farmers in Nyeri County have been urged to take advantage of the free artificial insemination services that the county government is currently offering. Stakeholders in the agriculture sector are looking into the increment of milk production in the county and this can be primarily done by improving the breed of cattle. According to the agriculture CEC Robert Thule, about 147 million litres of milk are produced in Nyeri from a population of about 158,000 cows. This is underwhelming. The cow that we want to have in Nyeri today is a cow that will be producing about 30 litres per day. We have about 22 cooperatives which are operating below capacity. And Nyeri happens to be among the three main producers of milk in the, all the 47 counties in Kenya. So once we increase our production, then that means our farmers, we raise their income, we shall create jobs for our people, we shall be able to feed ourselves, because besides selling the milk, that is part of income, that is part of uh, employment. A sum total of 5.5 million shillings has been injected into the program and about 13,000 samples of quality sperm are up for grabs. Twelve qualified county inseminators are available for any farmer who might need his cows artificially inseminated. The key is in getting the timing right or else all will be lost. Our farmers need to be sensitized, they need to know and ensure that they call the inseminator at the right time. Because if you lose, the animal loses heat, that's a loss now for you lose a, you lose a whole calf, you lose the liters of milk that I'm talking about. So it's important that this, this one is done in time. With the right expertise and timeliness of the AI services, the milk production in the county is expected to soar. The farmers are optimistic of the gains that will be attained and hope the services from the county government will continue to be free and available. Wakati ngobe yako inatoa nini heat, hauna surface, hauna pesa, inakuwe ni shida kabisa. Sasa ata kiwago ya masiwa inaansa kuwe dashini. Ju wakati wa timely, there is no timely application of 
lakini wakati huu tunafurahia tutapata begu kwa wakati ufao na begu ya hali ya juu mapato ni kiasi cha kilo 4 kilo 5 hatujawahi kufikisha kumi. ni watu wachache wameshafikisha kilo kumi. na sasa tunategemea tukiletewa hizi begu tutaongeza hata afadhali tufikiche kilo 15 tunaweza furahia begu inatoa maziwa kiasi ya kilo 7 ne 4 kilo 8 na sasa naona nitafaidika Telephone numbers are available to the farmers should they need the services and any of the 12 trained inseminators will be available. Carol Derry Katie News Newry County. All right, now away from Nyeri, let's uh, also focus on other matters. In what is clearly a case of if you cannot beat them, then definitely join them. Uh, Estonian taxi hailing app Taxify is set to begin operations in Nairobi after teaming up with local cabs who previously opposed the entry of Uber. Taxify has already signed up 400, over 400 drivers belonging to the Kenya Taxi Cab Association to its platform, making Kenya its second destination on the continent that is after Johannesburg and Cape Town in South Africa. Taxify further revealed that it, uh, that it only works with fleets and uh, the fact that also we are looking at them expanding across the African continent. So that is one of the other competitors of Uber. Now remember, not far from today, Easy Taxi chose to close shop and uh, choose to partner with Uber as well. So will uh, Taxify handle the competition from Uber? And now on to our weekly feature, that is Transformers. Kenya is hoping to expand her exports into the United Arab Emirates as well as the Far East in the line of meat products. With the government injecting over 1 billion shillings into the defunct Kenya Meat Commission this year, uh, prospects are looking up. And on this week's edition of Transformers, we delve into the meat business, which has seen investors make massive multi-billion shilling investments into the country. In a vast globalizing world, Kenya is increasingly upping its game to play on the international stage even as she looks to boost her trade volumes. Global trade of manufactured goods as of 2013, according to UNCTAD, stood at $12 trillion, representing a threefold jump. Other private players keen on leveraging in the lucrative meat processing business is Indian-owned farm, Quality Meat Parkers Limited. All of our products that are being made on the current line, all the meat comes from here in Kenya. QMP is operating with about 300 contract farmers throughout the country of Kenya. And what we do is we train these farmers on how we want the meat to be finished or the chicken product to be finished. The farm has commissioned a 200 million shilling investment in a new meat processing line. We're launching the new line of nuggets and breaded products from quality meat packers. The line has a capacity of 4,000 kilograms per hour and is intended to make ready-to-use products for the mass market here in Kenya. This is the first time that such a line has been launched in Kenya and this equipment is coming in from Holland and Europe um, and has been specially customized uh, for this environment here in Kenya. The investment in the new line is targeted towards boosting export volumes as well as creating more jobs in Kenya's manufacturing sector which as of last year generated 800,000 jobs against a target of 1 million. Our thought process between acquiring this machinery is to be able to take the industry to the next level. As you can understand today, these products are not available in Kenya, so we have to import them from outside of the country. But now that the machinery is here, we can make these products in Kenya with Kenyan meat and poultry products, and we can sell them to Kenyans, allowing the whole chain to be within Kenya. With a thriving dairy sector, among the key areas Kenya is betting big on is export of meat products. The government in the 2016-2017 national budget allocated 550 million shillings to the Kenya Meat Commission to finance modernization. This is expected to revamp the struggling processor. Sure, we're now in the test phase but we will be launching officially um, starting on August 1st yeah, and we'll be launching on all the major retailers. Uh, that is hopefully including Nakumat, Chaskis, Naivas, uh, 
Chandrana and all the other major uh, retailers in the country. Kenya's meat export business is yet to gather sufficient momentum as industry players position themselves to tap into new markets despite them enduring high operational costs linked to power costs and high taxes. With the harmonization of standards by the Kenya Bureau of Standards being in earnest, players look forward to growing exports as issues relating to non-tariff barriers are eliminated. And even as jobs remain hard to come by, the urgent need to develop new industries and venturing into new markets places Kenya on a pedestal that could catapult it from being the regional powerhouse in East Africa to being a key global player in world trade. Abiyagina, KTN Business. All right, now away from matters to do with meat products, let's now focus our attention on what exactly has been happening in the market. At the end of last week, we did see the news about uh, Britain voting to leave the European Union, and that is going to take about two years before they can completely exit the market. But already we can see some sort of effects that have been, uh, you know, panically been seen on the emerging economies that is Kenya inclusive now joining us to have that conversation as well and let's put this conversation to rest at least we've been doing this for about uh, 10 days now uh, talking about Brexit but Maurice Odor who is the investment manager at Saiton Investment joins us now uh, to have this discussion uh, Maurice thank you so much for joining us and it's good to have you on business today once again well what do you make out first of uh, issues to do with brexit and how there's been some sort of panic uh, not just globally but also in the emerging markets i think the 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 brexit issue if you look at it in perspective the uk citizen actually wanted wanted to bring to to come out of the european union which they actually did when they went on the referendum mm -hmm. but if you look at the actual impact of this initially there was a panic even in the terms of the global markets environment you saw a lot of uh, stock markets especially in the europe and also part of it mostly in the uk recording a lot of volatility but the what we saw yesterday the market actually is now shrugging off the the issue and the impact of brexit mm -hmm. if you look at it in terms of emerging markets it may result a lot some levels of volatility especially as now investors try to move to safe havens we are likely to see commodities like gold the uh, prices increasing yeah. and again you like to see a bit of strengthening of dollar but for the sterling point we love to suffer for some time all right so locally we have seen a number of people as well also uh, bargaining on whether or not they should uh, change their pounds say into dollars or invest it in, in, in gold. Um, from where you sit as an investment manager, would you actually opt to change your money into dollars or invest it in gold? Where we are, Joy, if you look at it, dollar, especially during the, the referendum, dollar was in high demand and dollar actually strengthened against the UK pound. If you look at the performance of the, Euro, of the, of the UK, mm -hmm. since the time they entered the European Union, it has actually been better. Actually, and again, if you look at most of the companies that are operating in the UK, are actually companies that are there as a result of this agreement. So if we are likely, if we consider now the worst case scenario that the, that the big companies now pull out, like to see effects on the, European, on the UK economy, which again might again result in some le levels of volatility on the pound. But on the long term, the dollar is the, is the, 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 the currency that investors should look for if right. you want to do currency. Okay, um, uh, Jeffrey Sachs and his consultancy have actually predicted that African economies could feel a bigger impact when it comes to Brexit because now they have to renegotiate and uh, while we might see most of the EPAs not directly affected, mm. um, there's likely to be an effect uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa because we mm. seem to be mm. almost the biggest trade partner with the European mm. countries or European Union countries. Uh, but from where you sit, how would you put this into perspective? You look at number of sub-Saharan Africa, which are more commodity-driven. Mm -hmm. The biggest market for their export is usually the European markets. And if now they're pulling out of the UK, it means now all these uh, all these uh, all these countries will now have to go back and renegotiate with Britain, and again to some extent negotiate again with the European Union. Yeah. A case in point we have been hearing again Kenya again Kenya, you know, also almost started negotiating with the European Union. It now means suppose negotiating with one block, they'll have to negotiate with the European Union and again renegotiate with the UK. 
but of the positive side that the, the relation between Kenya and the UK dates back to the colonial period, which again has always been very positive, and we are lucky to see no impact on that. If you look at the performance of the global market, especially for emerging markets, countries like Kenya, mm -hmm. and again look at the number of uh, sub-Saharan countries that are looking to raise capital in terms of euro bond, they might actually suffer and they might be forced to issue bonds at more at a premium compared to what could have happened earlier, and that this issue was not there. Right. But in totality, if you look at it, uh, the, the export destination in terms of uh, sub-Saharan Africa, there likely to be some impact in terms of the negotiating of these trade deals. Okay. Yeah. Now, that, let's now focus on the Kenyan economy itself. You know, there's been speculation that maybe the exports industry is going to be affected uh, by Brexit, uh, you know, tourism as well, uh, horticulture, uh, which actually is one of the bigger uh, exports out of Kenya. But let's now look at the stock exchange or the securities exchange. Uh, last week, we s did see the NSC 20 share index drop to its lowest. I think it was about 3,665.28 points if I'm not mistaken and uh, that is the lowest that we have seen it at uh, since 2012 May yeah. what exactly caused it is it as a result of Brexit or are we just uh, looking at other factors altogether if you look at it where market was in 2012 mm -hmm. we were coming from an environment where economy really suffered in terms of the weak macroeconomic conditions yeah. and again this was as a result of things that were happening in the European markets in terms of the 2011 the time that we had the eurozone crisis and if you look at how Kenyan stock market works, 75% yeah. of it is commanded by foreign investors. If you break these foreign investors further, you realize that the biggest proportion is coming from the Europe. So whenever there's something happening in Europe, it will have a reflection on the local, local market. Mm -hmm. Where we were, the market has been struggling for the better part of this year. Still, we can say market has done relatively flat, but we are looking at a number of big counters losing seriously. Look at uh, a stock like KCB has yeah. dropped all the way from a price of 55 Right now, you're trading around 34 shillings. And again, you are seeing stocks like uh, Equity Bank trading at 38. Mm -hmm. Safaricom trying to hold the market at about 17, 17 shillings a share. If you look at it, all this totality, the performance of the market has mainly been driven by the structure of the Kenyan stock market, mainly foreign driven. And again, if you look at it in terms of even the performance of this company, and all the fundamentals still remain strong for this listed company, we saw the banking industry recording double digit EPS growth recording about 13.9%, which is better even compared to last year. And going forward, what we are likely to see is Kenyan market is going to be, the performance will be determined by what's going to happen in the, in yeah. the global markets, mm -hmm. and more so in the European market, because most foreign investors come from that destination. All right, uh, so you did mention that the NSC uh, structure is foreign driven. And uh, while we might see that most of the companies that are listed there, uh, some of the bigger ones are companies like KCB, uh, like Safaricom, like Equity, that do have uh, quite some huge local investment as well. So are there measures that can be put in place um, uh, to you know, ensure that at least the 20 share index is, is, is keeping at its level? Because I think the highest that it has been at is about 5,000. And when it was at 5,000, what exactly was going right? And now that it is at uh, 3,600 or thereabouts, you know, when you compare the two, what exactly needs to be done to keep it um, afloat? If you look at it in terms of the activity of the Nobis Stock Exchange, in fact, we used to have a foreign ceiling of 75%, mm -hmm. which was lifted. Yeah. Nowadays, foreigners can even own a company 100% listed. So market, there's really nothing that can even to, to protect the performance of the NSC20 because it comes as a result of the activities in the market. If we come up with a way of, let's say, coming up with a point where it can't go below, it will not work. So these things are going to be generally the structure of the market, mm -hmm. ensuring what you need to do as Kenyans also need to do like investor education, so that more locals continue participating in the local market and we stop over relying on foreigners to drive the performance of the stock market. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of Africa's, in fact, he's Africa's richest man, <laughs> uh, that is Aliko Dangote. Uh, recently they said that he had lost about $3.3 .3 billion. Uh, and, and, and that means that his uh, ranking had gone down. Mm -hmm. But then uh, latest news coming out of uh, West Africa is that he's now shifting his attention or shifting his focus of investment from cement uh, to oil and gas. Do you think something is happening in the global markets that we need to know about? If you look at the structure of the Nigerian economy, uh, Dangote has been known for cement production mm. and now this attention now shifting more to oil and gas. There's a number of policies that have been put in place by that economy so that they could spur the growth in that sector. 
there's a, a they've come up with serious measures to ensure that the local benefit more from that sector i think dangote is now shifting his attention from cement to this sector of course if you look at again again a number of african countries there's a lo lot of exploration going on and this is the sector that according to most economies now will drive the growth for most african countries going forward I think this, the, the, the Dangote is now shifting from the sector that is perceived that is going to drive the growth of most of these economies going forward. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Maurice. We do appreciate the time taken to come talk to us about what is happening in the markets. Maurice Odwar is the investment manager at uh, Saiton Investments, and uh, he was just talking to us about exactly what's happening in the markets. And we'll now take a commercial break, but when we return, we are going to be talking more about uh, the Olympic economic impact for Kenya, and uh, that is in regard to the Rio Olympics. So the road to Rio, everybody is uh, focusing their attention on Eldoret, but what does this mean for us as an economy? Let's take that break. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. You're watching KTN News, and this is Business Today. It's a Friday and the beginning of the month, but we're coming to you live from the Standard Group Center, and we're joined by Toskin from the Standard Paper, and uh, he's also a commentator, regular commentator here on the various programs, Zili Zala, as well as News Sources here on KTN, as well as Morning Express, right? Uh, thank you so much for joining us. But before we can s get into that conversation about the Rio Olympics and what this means for Kenya as an economy, I uh, would now like to hear what exactly is making headlines in business around the world. And Trix Ngato is going to be telling us that before we get into that conversation about the Rio Olympics. Right, so we have a lot of intriguing headlines making it on the uh, across the, the business realms internationally. And so we have the standard today, the Business Daily. We're going to be taking a look at the Wall Street Journal and also a few other papers that are very uh, trusted um, names in the business uh, realm. So we have the Wall Street Journal here. The headline today is European Cities Battle for London's Finance Crown. You're still having a lot of ripple effects on the economic situation in uh, Europe following the Brexit uh, exit of Europe from the European Union of uh, of course, it's not done yet, but there are a lot of um, ripple effects that are happening right now. And then we have Hershey rebuffs $23 billion offer from Cadbury owner Mond Mondelez. So we are having another interesting story there about the, the uh, Cad uh, Cadbury's offer to Hershey that was not uh, accepted. And then the re Brexit vote cast shadow over London's building boom. So the, the real estate um, industry in London is taking a hit following the, the Brexit uh, uh, um, the exit of Britain from the EU and of course if you want to know more about the, the details of this happenings you can take a look at the uh, Wall Street Journal and then we have here Credit Suisse CEO one year anniversary gifts Brexit upheaval so still more stories that are just surrounding the whole issue of Brexit so if you could take a, a, a look of, at another paper here we have um, we have the standard here and the, to, the, the headline today, as you know, the people have been rushing the last minute dash to have their KRS tax, to meet the KRS, KRS, KRA tax deadline, sorry. And so the headline here is chaotic last minute rush as thousands miss KRA tax deadline. A lot of people had complaints about the systems being down. They had a lot of people who were not able to make it uh, to, the, to, to the systems because of the very long queues, the last minute rush. Everyone was trying to make it yesterday. And, you know, if you want more details about what Kenyans were up to yesterday, you can take a look at that paper. And then we have here the Financial Times and bond yields fall to fresh record lows. So this is a story that is actually tied to the whole Brexit issue. And the Financial Times is taking, putting a closer focus at the bonds in Europe. And, of course, if you want to know the, more about this, they are giving us a play-by-play -play coverage of the post-Brexit uh, events in the economy, especially in Europe. So we have a subhead here that says... 
Brexit, the aftermath, full FT coverage. So if you want everything to, to, to know everything about the Brexit, just go on to the Financial Times and get the business side of things as they happen. If you take a look at another paper, um, we also had the Business Daily and the headline today is Munga says to sell Brit Brit Britain's stake within two years. So of course this is those affected um, shareholders and everyone affected by the Britain, uh, the sell of Britain of course can take a look at this. I don't want to give all the details of this story because of course I'll be giving it away for those who want to go and read the whole story. That's it for today on our World Press Business Edition. Well, thanks a lot, Trix, for that update. And clearly, there is still some sight of Brexit when it comes to business. But now let's talk about sport, but sport and business. In a way, uh, Toskin, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Toskin. Uh, you you've had, clearly, you've had a busy week with what's going on in Eldoret. Yeah. Uh, but for people who don't understand what's going on in Eldoret and yeah. what this even means for a country like Kenya, let me ask a question for uh, them or on their behalf what is happening in Eldoret and uh, what economic impact does it have for us as a country uh, it's, a, it's a real down to you know the chasing for the, the, the tickets to participate at the Rio Olympics come uh, August 5 to uh, August 21st it will be a three-week event in Rio de Janeiro uh, in Brazil mm -hmm. uh, but today you have to first of all start by getting that ticket ensuring that uh, you win your qualifying race you become number one, number two, you automatically qualify to go and represent Kenya in Brazil. And remember, if you go to Brazil and win a gold medal or you win a silver medal, that means a lot in terms of uh, revenue generation, mm -hmm. uh, ensuring that uh, if you are going to participate in further championships other than the Olympics, anytime you go there, you are entitled to something we call appearance fees. So it all starts here. Whenever you see Rudisha, you know, participating in the IAAF mm -hmm. Diamond League, yeah. you know he's got something called the appearance phase. So all that has to start somewhere. And in our case, yesterday and today, those young men and women are actually looking for that crucial ticket to participate in the Rio Olympics. All right. Yeah. Are our athletes doxed? Um outside there where they win this money and then back at home or is it just a one-way taxation they are they are taxed mm -hmm. they are taxed out there and unfortunately or fortunately or whichever way you want to look at it yeah. they are also taxed here uh, what happens is that any earnings an athlete wins uh, while racing abroad it has to be taxed and over and above that there's always what we call the the agent's fees they will always be you know, deducted from the overall earnings. And uh, there has been a debate locally where athletes say that uh, they need, you know, to be considered because they are taxed at mm. where they, they participate. And when they immediately they declare their earnings here, again, the tax money is on their case. And I right. uh, remember today people are still, you know, running up and down to make sure that their tax returns are up to date. All right. So also the athletes do So having same. a conversation about sports management around this time wouldn't be such a yeah. bad idea. Um, we've seen so many athletes as well as sportsmen and women in the country today, uh, you know, doing so well internationally. But then when you come back home, uh, they don't seem to have very solid investments. And maybe one would actually ask why. Uh, why don't they actually, what exactly even causes them not to invest very heavily locally at home? Fortunately, uh, Doreen, uh, things are changing again. Uh, the current crop of uh, athletes and footballers uh, have now a different mindset compared to maybe the athletes of the yesteryears. Because if you look at someone like Rudisha, he's got a manager, yeah. and that manager is looking at his interest, both business-wise and also on the, on, on the track. So they have people who look up to them, and including even our star, footballer today, Victor, Victor Anyama, Anyama yeah. who has just moved from Southampton to Tottenham. Mm -hmm. He has a manager. The other day, he was being hosted by Supersport here, and uh, his manager was there talking about what they are trying to do with Victor Anyama, a South African by the name Rob, mm -hmm. uh, but he lives in Britain. Yeah. He's come here every step that Wanyama makes. Uh, Rob, his manager and business development manager, is always with him. So all those things are uh, changing.
maybe for the last generation, maybe of uh, 10 or 20 years ago, that is where we have a problem. But for now, Rudisha, Asbel Kiprop, Vivian, they have people who are taking care of their monies. All right. Yeah. And uh, finally, as we head to Rio, uh, what are your expectations from Kenya's athletes? I think we've got, uh, we've got to be optimistic. Uh, we've seen uh, initially uh, question marks had been raised about David Odisha not really performing very well. But then today, we've s yesterday, first of all, we saw him really race a good race. Mm -hmm. And he posted a very good time, 1.43.5 um, uh, minutes in uh, racing in 800 meters. So that, for me, is an indicator that if Rudisha is really feeling well, feeling good about himself, that could really trickle down to the rest. Also, Vivian Chiriot, she won the 10,000 meters uh, uh, race yesterday. Mm -hmm. And today also, she has won the 5,000 meters. And the way she was, you know, racing, it's like she didn't even feel the rigors of yesterday's performance. Okay. So if that feel good energy. thing, yeah. yeah, if that feel good thing continues, then I think Kenyans, we are ready to celebrate in Rio de Janeiro. Also, Asbed Kiprop has won the 1,500 meters, and it was like, it was just a jog to the, to, to the, to the finish line. <laughs> to the finish so line, right. I'm optimistic personally. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could go to Rio Olympics and watch them going? perform. Uh, one of us is going, Bismarck okay. Mutai, oh, okay. the senior sub at the Standard newspaper. Mm -hmm. And also, Lin Washira should be going to Rio. So our viewers, viewers should really, you know, Look out for that. Look I guess out for that. Th that's yeah. how Forte is yeah. going to really give us all the updates yeah. uh, that we're looking forward to having. Well, thank you so much, Toskin. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure thank you. speaking to you. That is Toskin from The Standard uh, talking to us about what uh, the Olympics mean for Kenya's economy as well as our athletes. Let's now take a look at how uh, the markets are performing. And that's just a look at how the markets are performing. And clearly, uh, the Kenyan shilling is having a good time right now. Uh, against the US dollar, it's just about 101 shillings at a few cents. And uh, when it comes to the pound sterling, it's in between 133 and 138, so not doing too badly either. And I uh, guess we'll keep that strength throughout the next week, unless uh, we're going to have any panics yet again as a result of Brexit news or the latest developments coming out of Britain. But well, uh, let's wind up with our Twitter poll question where we are asking you, uh, you know, after the US Department of State warned U.S. citizens to avoid travel to the border areas of Kenya. Um, we are asking you, do you think that these travel advisories help avert uh, terror or turn away investors or maybe keep citizens vigilant? Now, 24% of you say that uh, travel advisories help avert terror, while 18% uh, of you say uh, travel advisories turn away investors, and 39% say uh, travel advisories keep citizens vigilant. So a majority think that travel advisories help keep citizens vigilant. So let's keep this conversation going. Uh, you can reach our Twitter handle that is at KTN News or my Twitter handle at Joy Doreen Bira. I'd like to thank you all uh, for watching this edition of business today and we've been coming to you live from uh the standard group center here in nairobi and in case of anything you can visit our website as well for more news that is ktnnews.com or standardmedia.co.ke i would like to say thanks to the team that has helped put this together uh our cameraman william kibet and our director uh raul and uh okadi and uh, the rest of them as well. Thank you all so much. Wishing you a happy month of July. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.